Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing okay. Uh, so today's video was changing a consumer unit, which was a quite a new one actually. 2016, it was installed. Um, it was a dual RCD Schneider Easy Nine board that someone put in, and the customer called me to say that they were having problems with the electrics tripping out. So I came in and did loads of tests. Couldn't find any faults anywhere. And it seemed like the tripping was really intermittent and it was mainly in the evenings when they had loads of things, different things running. So I think the issue is rather than being a fault there, it's just all the electronic devices throughout the house are basically giving out a little bit of earth leakage current, each one. And that builds up to the point where you've got more than 30 milliamps of earth leakage current. And so because there were quite a few circuits on each RCD, the RCD was actually tripping out just because of the high earth leakage current. So I recommended to them to just change the circuit breakers to RCBOs so that each individual circuit had its own RCD protection and then that would solve the problem. And also if there were any faults there that were sort of intermittent, at least it would minimize it down to one particular circuit so they would be able to know exactly which circuit the fault was on. So today's video is just me doing that, basically keeping the main hub uh, of the board, keeping the actual um, casing of the board, keeping the main switch, but just taking out the RCDs and MCBs and replacing them with RCBOs. As always guys, if you enjoy this video, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more great videos coming soon. So here it is, a beautiful new Schneider Easy 9 consumer unit only installed three years ago on a brand new house but sadly poorly designed system because I'm gonna to have to rip out all those beautiful new MCBs and RCDs and put RCBOs in. Uh, it's just one of those things it seems like the Sparkies who designed it they made massively long circuits because um, it's a pretty big house and they just hadn't thought it through properly. So you've got these huge long ring circuits with tons and tons of sockets on and obviously loads of electronic devices, computers, TVs, gadgets here, there and everywhere. And they're all kicking out a bit of earth leakage current and it's causing it to trip. Now reconfiguring this is going to be a little bit tricky because you can imagine you've got different buzz bar set up going on. We've got two neutral bars, one on the right and one on the left. Um, now obviously each one of those neutral bars at the moment is fed from its own RCD. But what I'm going to have to do is link those two up so that they're both fed directly from the main switch. And then connect the RCBOs to those. So... Just taking everything out, first of all, disconnecting the RCDs, taking the buzz bars out, and just getting out any unnecessary bits and pieces. And then I'm gonna take the MCBs out one by one so that I don't lose the circuit order, because I wanna keep the circuits in the same order that they were before. And then just individually take the live out of each circuit breaker pop it into the new RCBO and then transfer the neutral across and I'm just gonna have to thread those neutrals through to try and make them nice and neat because obviously they're connected at the moment to the neutral bar but I'm gonna have to take them and actually connect them directly to the RCBOs now. It's the first time I've worked with one of these Schneider Easy 9 boards and I must say they're quite spacious inside, which is good, especially at the bottom, underneath the circuit breakers, there's actually a huge amount of space, which is quite handy. I'd forgotten what it was like to work with normal size RCBOs though. So in my head, I had the Hager mini RCBOs going in, which are basically the same size as the normal MCBs. But of course, the Schneider EC9 RCBOs are normal size RCBOs, shall we say, basically double the size of an MCB. So it was a little bit tricky getting them all to fit in neatly, I must admit. And especially what got me was the earth and uh, neutral tails, because they were extremely long. And out of habit, I've always been told that it's wrong to cut the neutral tails 
because they're designed with a certain resistance in mind or something like that. Now, I was surprised to see a yellow sticker on the end of the neutral tail on these Schneider RCBOs, which said that you should cut the neutral tails to length. I've never seen that before. It specifically says you shouldn't tie them, like cable tie them into a bundle, because obviously you'll get current looping effects from that if you're not careful. Like, But it does say cut them to length. Now, I felt a bit uncomfortable with that still. I cut the first one to length and then I just thought this doesn't feel right because later on if I if you know they need to be moved around or something like that it just feels wrong to cut them short so I ended up leaving the rest of them full length and just trying to like neatly sort of weave them around throughout the board not in any loops but just put them in a way that they wouldn't cause too much of an issue. Now, whether that was the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do, I'm not sure. I think both ways have their advantages and disadvantages. If you cut them short, probably it would be neater, but then if you ever needed to reconfigure it in the future, you might have a problem with short neutral tails, which basically ruins the whole RCBO, then you end up having to change all the RCBOs again. So let me know in the comments what you guys think. What would you have done? Would you have cut the neutral tail short? Or would you have left them full length? So you can see here now I've taken the two RCDs out. And I'm just opening up these RCBO boxes. and just getting... I've got the first RCBO in there. But then I, I had to make the neutral connection between the two neutral bars. So what I did in the end was get a bit of 16mm neutral tail. And just connect that from one side to the other so that we've got a good solid connection between the two neutral bars. The, the connections are not big enough to fit 25, and 25 was not really necessary for such a short length. Um, so I put 16 in there just to run between those two neutral bars on the left and on the right. Um, and I just run it in along the bottom of the board neatly so it comes out of one neutral bar on the left, go, goes along the bottom of the board, and then goes in to the, to the neutral terminal on the right there. I've just noticed I have this really annoying habit of holding my screwdriver in my mouth. Uh, this is probably what they call the electrician's third hand. Um, it's just so um, handy to be able to hold that tool that you're going to need again a few seconds later. Um, I don't know where I picked that up from really, but uh, I seem to do it a lot. I was quite conscious of it when I was filming this and I kept taking my screwdriver out and putting it back in my pocket. but. Um, it, yeah, let me know in the comments if you do the same. Is it just me or is it a typical Sparky or Tradesman thing to do? So I've got my neutral bar connected across now. And then I was just threading through the neutral tail for the first circuit breaker. Quick cup of coffee. Literally, I just downed that coffee pretty much in one go. There we go, that is it. That is literally me drinking a cup of coffee right there. Um, I'm not one to hang around and sit and waste time drinking coffee. Down the coffee, get on with the job. That's my motto. Let me know in the comments if you guys take coffee breaks, like actual coffee breaks. Like, do you stop? Do you go and sit in a van for 15 minutes and have your coffee? Or do you just down your coffee while you're working or sip away at it while you're working um i generally never have coffee breaks as in i never go to the van and just sit and have a coffee unless the job's going really well and i'm like way ahead and i think oh, i might as well just chill and take my time then i'll go and sit in the coffee and sit in the van drink a flask of coffee and catch up on my emails or something on my phone um but generally, I don't stop for coffee breaks. I'll stop for lunch, and I'll maybe have 15 minutes lunch break. Just stop, shovel down my lunch, and then carry on 
I've never really been one to stop for a long time for for um, coffee breaks or lunch breaks because at the end of the day, time is money and I'd rather just finish earlier and go home really rather than hanging around while I'm on the job. Yeah, threading these neutral cables and getting them in neatly is quite a palaver, to be honest. They were really long on these Schneider breakers as well. I think they must be about, I don't know, at least 50 centimetres long, something like that, half a metre. So there's a lot to thread in there, and they're quite thick as well. So they are um, a bit tricky. I was just reading the instructions, actually, to see if it mentioned anything about cutting the the neutral tails in the instructions because I can read this yellow label which says it's okay to cut them but there was nothing in the actual instructions for the device which mentioned anything about cutting them so I was a little bit puzzled and only the 32 amp ones had the sticker on the neutral tail to say that you can cut them the other amperages um, didn't have a sticker on the tail to say that you could cut it so that was another reason why I just decided to leave the full length in the end on, on all of them. I think I did the right thing. And of course you've got the earth tails to deal with on these as well. So at first what I did is for the first few I connected them into the earth terminals at the top there in the earth bar along with the earth conductors of the actual outgoing cables. And then I had a moment where I suddenly remembered something that another electrician had said to me somewhere on social media, where he said that what he always does is takes them to the bottom of the consumer unit, runs an earth tail down from the earth bar, and then connects all of the uh, functional earth tails from the RCBOs all together into a connector block or into Wargos. And I thought, actually, that's quite a good idea because then when it comes to testing later on, you don't keep having to fiddle around with these little functional earths when you're trying to take the earth cables in and out. So I thought I'd do that and I thought it might be a neat way of doing it as well. So I literally just threaded them down behind the back of the DIN rail and threaded them out below the circuit breakers all into a bunch. And then at the end... What I did is got some Wargos, some like um, click click down Wargos, I can't remember what you actually call them, but the ones that click down that you can use on flexible conductors. I got some of those and just made like a little connection block at the bottom that I connected them all into with just one earth tail going down to connect them all to the main earthing terminal. And that seemed to work quite well. It was a bit of spaghetti. That was the only thing, because you have all these 12 functional earths all bunched up together. But it's kind of nice to have them all in one place. And just not have them intertwined with all of the normal earth wires. Let me know in the comments what you like to do. And uh, for those of you who remember me putting green-yellow sleeving on a functional earth on the Hager consumer unit change video I'll just say to you now I did not sleeve them so for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about the previous video I had bizarrely put green yellow sleeving on the functional earth cable which is this white cable I've got in my hand now and that's completely pointless and actually contrary to the regulations because as someone pointed out to me in the comments on the video Functional Earth, according to the regulations, has its own colour. It should be white or cream. So that's why it's white, and that's why you should not put green yellow sleeving on it. It's both pointless and actually contrary to the regulations. So we just fast forwarded a little bit now, and I'm onto the fourth RCPO. Um, so making good headway here, I had to um, take the main earth cable out and just rejig it slightly to make room. Um, but yeah, so far so good. And as you can see, what I've done is I'm just taking out one MCB at a time, 
removing the live conductor, connecting that into the RCBO, and then putting the neutral conductor in afterwards, just so that I don't lose the order of sequence. Now, there's a couple of questions that come to mind about this job as we're going along. You realize that buzz bar might be an issue, or bus bar, depending on how you like to call it. Um, the copper bar that goes along underneath the circuit breakers to distribute the live. Well, essentially, uh, what I decided to do, as we had two buzz bars uh, from the previous lines of circuit breakers, I was able to just double those up in one circuit breaker to use them to extend across. And, you know, with a good solid connection, there's no issue there. Um, that's a perfectly acceptable thing to do. So I doubled up, as you can see there at the moment, in the first RCPO, it, the first little bit of bus bar ends there. But then I doubled up with another piece, which was about six modules long. And then I doubled up that one with another piece, which was another six modules long, which gave me the entire length that I needed with one actual spare um, at the end. And I left two spares at the beginning as well there next to the, um, the uh, main switch, you can see. That's because there were originally two spare slots in the board and I just thought it'd be better to, for continuity's sake to, to leave that um, as the case. And also the stickers on the front of the board is another thing, what would I do about those? So what I decided to do is I've got a brother label maker and I decided to just uh, print my own new labels and just stick them over the top of the previous labels um, just to make sure that everything was labeled up properly and you know exactly what's what. So that's what I did. I did have a bit of an issue though with my brother label printer, which you'll see a bit later on. So we'll fast forward a bit more. So you see now I've put the buzz bar in at the at the bottom, bus bar, and I'm just busy connecting the neutral tails into that right hand side neutral bar in the correct order. And then I'm gonna start with the left hand side set, basically. The next few RCBOs that I add will be connected to the neutral bar on the left hand side and the cables that are all coming in on the left will start to be moved across to the right. Now, as I disconnected these lives, I noticed that they'd doubled them over in a really weird kind of way. So when I double my conductors over, I tend to bend them back um, all the way to the, to the length of where the insulation ends. And I double them back tight, so, so it's like a straight flat loop, if you get what I mean. Um, but what they'd done here was sort of looped them round in like a circle almost. So there was a big gap between one side of the loop and the other. 
Um, now I've never really seen people do that before. I've always seen people bend them over directly at the end and then sort of clamp them with a pair of pliers so that they're, you know, doubled over properly and, and the one side is touching the other side. The way they did it here... I guess it works, but what I did have an issue with is a couple of them were a little bit broken when I took them out. They almost snapped off completely, the the actual copper bit that had been stripped back almost snapped off. So I had to just um, strip them back again and double them over properly. Let me know in the comments how you do it. Do you, bend, do you double your, your conductors back? Do you leave them as just single like that? Or do you loop them? over do you put ferrules on or some kind of crimp ends on or something like that let me know in the comments what you like to do so i'm just getting these last few mcbs across now we're nearly there and so far this is about an hour into the job the whole thing including doing all the RCD tests and stuff like that. It took me about two hours. And I was quite fortunate in the fact that all the neutrals were long enough to go to the RCBOs, so I didn't need to extend any cables within the board, which I was really pleased about, because you never quite know how it's going to go until you get started. But uh, yeah, they were all long enough, so I was just able to disconnect them from the neutral bar and then move them across neatly and connect them directly into the RCBO. So that was really great, and I ended up with a fairly neat job, which when you're retrofitting like this and when you're sort of improvising a little bit as you go along, there's always a worry that it's going to look like a bit of a pig's ear, but actually it turned out fairly neat, so I was quite pleased with that. Now, for those of you who are observant, you will notice something. The last circuit breaker that I'm going to put connect in is a 40 amp for the cooker. And most of you will say you should always put the highest rated circuit breaker the closest to the main switch. And I've heard people say this because they say that if you do the opposite, if you do like I'm doing now, where you've got a high rated circuit breaker at the end you will get voltage drop affecting your lighting circuits and you'll get dimming on your lights when you get a heavy load connected to your cooker for example let me know in the comments what you guys think about this because i heard this a little while ago and to be fair, I have always connected the heaviest loads closest to the main switch as a, a standard thing, but I never really understood why I was doing it that way. I just seemed to think that it was best practice. Now, in this case, I've kept the order of the circuit breakers as these guys installed them before. And maybe it's wrong. Maybe I should have swapped the 40 amp to the other end. The live and neutral conductors were 10 mil and they weren't long enough for me to put them at the front end right next to the main switch so i decided to leave the circuit breaker in the same order that it was there before but let me know in the comments what you guys think about this is it really an issue that you'll get dimming on the lights when you do this or is that just a bit of a myth um you know let me know what the science is behind it if you know anything about this i'd be really interested in, to know So all of the conductors are in now, all of the MCBs have been removed and I've just been threading through all the neutral and earth conductors to get them into the right place. I've been through and tightened up every, or just double check the tightness of every single one of the connections just to make sure, sure they're all tight enough. And now I'm juggling with this spaghetti of neutral tails and earth, functional earth tails to try and get them neat but first of all what I'm going to do is connect the earth tails in the functional earth tails um, and just get some wire goes and connect them in
Excuse the rather loud airplane flying over there. So yeah, I'm just gonna get some Wagos, make an earth tail down from the main earth terminal, and then connect all of these earth tails in with the Wagos. And then try and neatly tie everything back in there, just get it as neat as possible. And then I'll start doing some testing. So I've got the Wago 222 connectors here, and these are the lever splicing connectors according to Wago. I've got five-way connectors, and then I've got a little piece of earth wire linking in between each one. So I needed about four connectors to be able to connect in all the functional earth tails there. But that worked fairly well. And there we are, I finally managed to get all the wires in and get the bus bar cover on again um, fairly neatly. So um, it was rather satisfying. So now I'm doing the RCD testing and obviously we have to do an individual RCD test on every single one of these RCBOs to make sure that they're all functioning correctly. So we do the first test by just pressing the test button and then we have to do the actual electrical test. So we do half times the rated current at 0 and 180 degrees of the AC waveform. And then we do one times the rated current, so 30 milliamps, again at zero and 180 degrees. And then we do five times the rated current as well at zero and 180 degrees. And now with the 18th edition certificates, all we need to do for additional protection is write down the five times figure. And we take the highest of the two readings, whether it's the zero degrees or 180 degrees reading, whichever one's highest, we put that one down on the certificate. 
So I just went through here testing these one by one. And they all passed, so that was good. So now I'm just doing ring continuity tests on the ring circuits that are present just to make sure that the existing rings are actually complete. And interestingly, I did find on one of the rings that there was a break in the continuity on the CPCs. So um, that was good that I found that. It's a bit tragic, really. I was quite annoyed because clearly the electricians who installed the board originally didn't test to make sure that the rings were complete. Some of them were really long as well. I had really high readings. I think um, the earth continuity on one of the rings was like nearly three ohms. And the earth continuity on the lives was like 1.5 ohms, something like that, 1.6 ohms. So they were really long rings. And as I say, one of them had a complete break in the earth, so there was no continuity. So I had to inform the customer that I would have to do some further investigation work to find and rectify that fault in order to make the circuit safe. Um, but it does seem that the original electricians who installed the board either didn't test, or if they did, they just ignored the, the problem that was, the, that was there, because the customer says that they didn't have any alterations done to the socket circuit since the house was built, so it's not likely that someone's taken a socket off and an earth wire's popped out the back or something when they've done so. It seems like the fault has been there right from the original construction. Um, and I bet you guys find the same on a lot of properties, unfortunately. In new builds, there is a tendency to rush things, that's why I don't do any new builds just out of choice because the pressure is on price wise and often what that means is the electricians will cut corners or rush and make silly little mistakes along the way which don't get rectified. Um, it's just a sad truth in this industry unfortunately. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. So the testing is now complete and it's time to put the lid on. Now obviously things don't match uh, now on the lid, apart from the main switch location, everything else has kind of changed. So I just um, put the lid on for the first time just to see how it looks, make sure everything fits okay. It's always a little bit tight with our CBOs. They seem to, when you've got a lot of them, seem to bend the DIN rails slightly so that it's a little bit difficult to get the lid on, which is a shame. Now I needed some extra blanks, so I had already purchased some blanks from Contactum, which fit nicely. So I had to just get those blanks in and then think about how I was going to do the labelling. How I was going to make sure that it was labelled properly. And rather than trying to peel off all the old labels, I just decided to create my own new labels with my brilliant brother label printer that I have in the van which I don't use that often but when I do it's really um, something that you can't do without it just does the job really great now the embarrassing one thing was here when printing the labels I had to try to get the correct length um, so I did like a patch panel style label which should create um, basically one long label with separate sections for each circuit breaker but you have to measure the width of the circuit breakers correctly and I, to start off I measured them at 17 mil wide which was not quite right so when I printed the label it didn't line up all the way along it started off okay and then by the last breaker it was almost a whole breaker out so then I had to reprint another one so I thought I'll do 17.2 millimeters something like that. Um, it was a bit of a guessing game, to be honest. I should have just looked up exactly the correct dimensions for the circuit breakers, because it's hard to measure them exactly. And so eventually I got to the right measurement, but by the time I did, uh, I, my cartridge, my white label cartridge had run out. It ran out just as I got the, the measurements correct. So I wasn't able to print the label in white, so I opened my box up to see what spare labels I had, and I only had yellow, which was a bit annoying. 
because I would have wanted it to be white. But anyway, I, I put le yellow labels on instead. I did the top label just with the circuit numbers, and then I did another label below with the circuit numbers in a slightly smaller font, and then I wrote on it in Sharpie the names or descriptions of each circuit as accurately as I could. And um, that seemed to do the job. It's not the neatest. It could have been better, to be honest. Um, but unfortunately, it's one of those things. The label printer ran out and uh, it was too late to be able to go to the wholesaler and get a new roll. So I just had to make do with what I had. So that's it guys, uh, got the lid on, everything finished off, let me know what you think in the comments and as always if you like this video smash that like button and subscribe for more great videos coming soon.